So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free maths videos. Uh, this video is for the Mechanics 1 module in the A-level Maths at Excel service. So this video is about resultant forces which is basically working out the result of a combination of forces. Let's go and do an example to explain further. Uh, if you've got these two forces, for example, I want the result of these forces on this particle. That's all. So that's what it means by finding the resultant of these two forces. Uh, and now since these two forces uh, are written in vector form, basically it's just breaking up the components of the force, the horizontal and vertical components of each force. So this force is broken up into two newtons in the horizontal direction and three newtons in the vertical direction. By the way, if you don't know about vectors, I and J just basically means the X and Y direction, just in short. Okay, so let's work out the result of these two forces. First step is to combine the I's and combine the J's. So I've got two Newtons and two Newtons here and one Newton there going in the I direction. So total of three I uh, Newtons or three Newtons in the I direction and a total of, let's look over here, three Newtons and one Newton there, so four Newtons in the J direction. So basically you've got this picture here, three Newtons going that way, four Newtons going that way. These are the components of forces, yeah, so actually the real force is going like that, but the components are like this. So what is the real force, the resultant force of these two things? Basically, you just do a bit of Pythagoras, because if you drew a real right-angled triangle and made it 3 centimeters and 4 centimeters there, the the actual size of the resultant force would be, would be comparable to the actual size uh, of the hypotenuse in this triangle. So basically what I'm trying to say is the size of these sides corresponds to the size of the force itself. So all I have to do is actually do Pythagoras on this, work out the size of this side and I'd actually work out the size of the resultant force. So anybody who's done enough Pythagoras would have easily worked out that you've got 3 squared plus 4 squared which is 25 and when you square root it you get the resultant force which is 5 newtons. So that's that easy Pythagoras on there. Find the angle of the resultant force away from the I direction. So this is the I direction I'm talking about. I want to work out the angle going upwards from this horizontal line basically. And so a simple bit of trigonometry in this right angle triangle now. So all I do is since I've got that angle and I've got the opposite and the, ad and the adjacent, I'm going to do arc tan 4 over 3 which gives me 53.1 degrees. So let's move on to the next example, question 2. I've got a typical question where I've got a force uh, applied by the string on a pulley and what is the resultant force applied on the, on the pulley by string? So that's the question there. And uh, what is it? Well, a string usually in M1 is inextensible, which means the the tension throughout the string is always the same basically. So I've got 10 newtons of force going that way and 10 newtons of force going that way at an angle of alpha away from the horizontal and we're told tan alpha is 3 over 4. Now if tan alpha is 3 over 4 that means you've got a triangle like this because uh, 3 over 4 means that's the opposite and that's the adjacent. So opposite over adjacent equals tan alpha. There's my angle alpha. Doing a bit of Pythagoras on that gives you this 3, 4, 5 triangle. You can easily work it out. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25 square root and it gives you 5. We just did that earlier on, didn't we? Just slightly different. But anyway, so basically you get this triangle and what does that tell you? Since you were not told the angle you create this triangle to work out what you will later on need which is sine alpha and cos alpha. I don't know what alpha is but I could easily work out what sine alpha is. It's 3 over 5 because if alpha is there that means the opposite over hypotenuse is sine alpha adjacent over hypotenuse is cos alpha so therefore cos alpha is 4 over 5. Anyway so let's get back to work here. Um, 
what we need to first to work out the resultant of a force you need to work out the what we call the vertical and the horizontal components so let's work out the vertical components we're going downwards so I wrote it made an arrow going downwards for the vertical component how much force is going downwards well 10 newtons from here that's going straight down and how much of this diagonal force is going downwards so uh, you do need to watch the trigonometry video um, to really understand this but the shortcut is uh, the component that's going vertically downwards is the sine component uh, so because it's going away from this angle the component is going like this downwards so it's going away from the angle so 10 sine alpha is a component that's go of this force that is going downwards so a total of 10 plus 10 sine alpha is basically equal to 16 because sine alpha equals uh, 3 over 5 as we said earlier on 3, 3 fifth times 10 is basically 6 so 6 plus 10 equals 16 so the downwards force is 16 newtons I didn't bother writing newtons but whatever and the uh, horizontal force basically going in that direction but well, none of this force is going in the horizontal direction it's completely going straight down but how much of this force is going in the horizontal direction well we're going through the angle which means it's going to be cos okay so 10 cos alpha gives us the horizontal com component of this force going in that direction and as we said earlier on cos alpha is 4 over 5 4 fifths times 10 is equal to 8 so basically to round up we've got 16 newtons going downwards 8 newtons going that way we've got this picture here so as I was saying the horizontal force is 16 newtons and the sorry the downward force is 16 newtons and the horizontal force is 8 newtons which gives you this picture 16 newtons going downwards 8 newtons going that way and the resultant force is just a bit of Pythagoras like I said a few seconds ago so doing a bit of Pythagoras 16 squared plus 8 squared equals 320 and square rooting it gives you the resultant force which is in that direction which is just the square root of 320 and I don't really care what that is because that is the answer